Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We are so glad to have you with us again today for Jesus the Healer. Thank you for taking the time. And I know this, it'll be time well spent yes. because you can't give time to the Word and not come away increased because of it. Amen. So we're, we're here to hear the Word and to be doers of what we hear. It's the doer that's blessed. Amen. We've been looking at two words over the last several episodes called this, hold fast yes. because that is such a vital part to the life of faith. And it's a spiritual skill uh -huh. that we have to um, practice at yes. and develop in our life. Yes. We've been taking several different verses for our foundational scriptures and we want to look at them again today. Hebrews chapter four and verse 14. Mm -hmm. It reads, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast yes. our profession or our confession. Yes. It's the same word. Yes. Then we also see Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23. And we see like instructions here. It says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith. So what are we professing? We're professing what we believe. Yes. Yes. Amen. What is that to be? The word. We're yes. professing yes. the word yes. of what God says about us. We're not professing our feelings. Yes. We're not confessing just what we feel. It's such, it will robs us so much when we spend our life just talking about what we feel. Yes. It's what he says that changes everything that needs to be changed. And when we say what he says, we get what he says. Yes. Amen. So again, verse 23 says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Look at this, without wavering, yeah. without wavering. Uh, and why do we want to do that? The next phrase tells us, for he is faithful oh, that Lord promised. Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. In other words, uh, his part is not in doubt. Right. We will, he will always always meet faith. Amen. Always that profession of faith, his power will always meet it because he's faithful. Yes. Um, and you if people say, well, maybe it won't work for me. It's not possible because he is faithful. Yes. Uh -huh. He will always do what he says for you. Right. Now we're the variable, not him. I don't question his power. I just make sure I'm doing my part. Yes. Amen. Amen. Then there's Revelation chapter 2 and verse 25. It reads, but that which we have already, hold fast till I come. Yes. Amen. So what we already have manifested in our life, hold fast to it. That's yes. right. The answers, the miracles, the healings that we've all that we already have manifested, hold fast. But we could also see it this way: what we already have, just because we're in Christ, right. hold fast yes. to those, even if they haven't manifested. If we'll hold fast to what we know belongs to us yes. in Christ, they'll come into manifestation. Amen. And it's holding fast that that uh, opens the door for God to meet that. Yes. Amen. Amen. We were looking on the previous episode real quickly, and I want to touch on it before we go further today. We were looking at Hebrews chapter 3, and if we look at verse 6, it reads, But Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house we are, look at this next word. It's a two-letter one that's real big, if. Yes. <laughs> if yes. we hold fast yes. Yes. the confidence and the rejoicing. So yes. we could say this, if we hold fast the confidence and if we hold fast the rejoicing yes. Yes. of the hope firm unto the end. So we see this holding fast is connected to rejoicing. Yes. Yes. If we'll rejoice, it will give us a firm grip That's right. 
on the word that we're holding fast to, Amen. on the word we're confessing. Yes. Yes. It helps our, heart, our hold be hard, not yes. loose. Yes. Amen. Not loosely gripped. Yes. When we have a loose hold on something, the, any old thing that comes along can, can uh, dislodge it from us. Right. But when we have a firm grip, yeah. no opposition That's can get right. it away That's from right. us. Right. Amen. Have Amen. you ever, do you ever remember seeing, a, you've seen this, a basketball game? And one team's got it. They're dribbling it down the court and another comes in to steal that ball. And the two, there's two players. They got their same hands on the same ball. And I mean, they're tugging and nobody else, nobody's giving up. And, and what's a, the ref has to come in and break the thing up. Why? Because nobody's letting go. <laughs> That's the way we are. We grab hold and we don't let go. <laughs> Amen. And gratitude is such a force. Uh, it's a flow that we're to participate in because it, it plays a role in helping us hold fast. Yes. Now, um, everything that God has blessed you with, the devil is busy trying to steal it from you. Yes. Why? Right. Because say, the word tells us in John 10, 10, Jesus spoke and said, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. And as Brother Copeland has so wonderfully stated that what's he stealing? He's stealing the word out of you because if he can steal the word out of you, he can kill and destroy everything. Uh, But Jesus said, but I've come that you might have life. We have it. We have it. And we're holding fast to what we have. We're not letting go of it to the one who seeks to steal, kill and destroy from us. So the enemy, once we've received answers, to our miracles, once we've received healing, once we've received provision and things that God has that we've been believing for in our life, the enemy will always launch a Mm counterattack. You say, well, do you have scripture for that? Yes, I do. And that is when Jesus was revealing how the kingdom of darkness worked. He said, when the spirit is cast out of a man, He said, he goes about in dry places seeking rest and he finds none and he says, I'll go back to my house. Uh, Well, it's not his. But but he's a liar. (laughs) But in his estimation, he's trying to make you think that where he used to be was his. And it says, and also he'll come back and he finds that house uh, empty, swept, and garnished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he comes back in and he brings seven more wicked than himself with him. Yes. And the ending, the ending condition of that man was worse, worse. than it was beginning with. Yes. What's, that, what, what's that doing? Jesus is revealing through yeah. this uh-huh. that the yes. devil tries to come back. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's right. right. That's good. Yeah. That doesn't mean your faith isn't working. No. That doesn't mean the word isn't working. It, right. Jesus revealed to us the strategy uh-huh. of the enemy yes. is once he has been dealt with, he will always try to come back. Yes. That means once, if somebody received a healing, uh-huh. that the devil comes back to try to put that sickness right. back right. on them. Right. That doesn't mean you have lost your healing. That's right. Just because Amen. symptoms show back up. Come on. That's right. That's right. Jesus told us, he warned us to let us know so that we would not be duped by his return. Amen. Amen. That he'll always try to come back. Amen. Amen. Um, So don't be fearful of that. What did Jesus say about that house that when Satan comes back, he he finds it empty, swept, and garnished? Well, what's your safety for that? Don't be empty. Amen. Don't be empty, Amen. meaning there's no room for his return. Amen. He cannot, he cannot set himself back up Amen. in the residency of my life. Amen. Amen. Yes. So we have to stand our ground yes. against him. Sure. There was, um, as I said, and I want to say this because this we, uh, when at a time of a counterattack from the enemy, he always paints it as though, see, your faith isn't working. Yep. Right. The word isn't working. It worked for the others, not for you. Yeah. Right. He always wants to paint that. Don't fall into that way of thinking. Yeah. Um, I, I, was, I heard the report one time of a, a soldier that talked about during World War II. He said they p- took a particular island mm-hmm. 12 times. Why did they take it 12 times? Because they lost it 11. (laughs) (laughs) He said they'd take the island and then the enemy would launch a counterattack. 
and the enemy would get it back. Then they'd la- then our, our guys would launch another attack and that went back and forth, back and forth. The, the, the part that caused them to succeed was they never quit they never taking quit. it. Yeah. Never never quit. Quit. They kept never. going back. They didn't say, okay, three times is enough. Right, there you go. Confessing it three times is enough. If it doesn't work at, after three times, I, no, you just hold fast. Yeah. Amen. So the twelfth time they took it and they held it. Yes. Amen. 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 Why did they lose it eleven times? Because there was a counterattack. Yes. One woman that uh, there was a testimony that happened during the healing revival. Now there was a healing revival going on. Uh, in the United States from 1947 to 1958. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of evangelists that were brought to the forefront and other ministers. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was predominantly uh, a healing revival in the sense that even Brother Hagin said this. He said healing was in the air. He said it was so easy to get people healed because it was just in the air. He he meant spiritually. And... um, there was a crusade that Oral Roberts did one time down in Dallas, Texas. Mm-hmm. And there were, there were some ministers um, that were in that meeting. Mm-hmm. And a friend of theirs got in the healing line mm-hmm. for Oral Roberts to minister to him. Right. And this woman had been, uh, she was born completely blind. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Oral Roberts laid hand on her, laid hands on her, prayed for her, and her sight came back. And so there were minister friends of this woman who was healed there in the meeting, and they were rejoicing. So they knew she had received her healing. About three weeks later, they were talking, these minister friends of the woman were talking to relatives of the woman. And said, oh, uh, the relative of this woman that received her healing said, oh, we were just with her the other day. And she's starting to lose her sight again. And we just told her, we're just so afraid you're going to lose your healing. Now, that's what they told her. (laughs) Well, what a help is that? (laughs) And this minister friend said, I got so so angry at their unbelief that I had to go in the other room. Yeah. Uh-huh. To not to avoid saying something, right. that their response because they're Christians, yeah. their response should not have been, "Oh, we're yeah. so afraid you're going to lose your healing." Right. Oh. He uh-huh. said they should have said, "We're standing with you. Yes. We're adding our faith, yes. and we're encouraging you. Yes. Hold fast to what you have." You see, you give people words that help them hold fast, yes. not words yes. that help them uh, fall prey to the enemy. Yes. Yes. And that minister said, well, you know what happened. She lost her healing. And see, and then people will say, now see, that healing business doesn't work. Well, (laughs) healing works. And it's not a healing business. It's a healing inheritance. And it does work. Uh, It's not the healing didn't work. It's that the holding fast to the profession of faith was not done. Now, On the other side of this, there was another woman that was in that same meeting. She was also healed of blindness. Mm -hmm. And after she had hands laid on her, after several weeks, uh, a little bit at a time during the day, her sight would leave. Mm -hmm. They didn't come back. What was it? The symptoms of blindness were trying to come back. But this time she said, oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. What's she doing? She's holding fast. After she had received her healing, she still had to hold fast in the face of the counterattack. And so she stood her ground. And actually her sight went, went off for three weeks solid. She went back to being blind. And the whole time, for those three weeks of blindness Mm -hmm. that came back, the whole time she sang, thank God for healing. Thank God I'm still the healed. See, holding fast can't go by the clock. It can't go by the calendar. Uh 
It doesn't matter how long symptoms yeah. that counterattack, uh -huh. that try to come back. It doesn't matter how long. You just keep standing your ground. Yeah. Yeah. And don't think, well, I thought it'd leave in a day or two. If it right. didn't, my faith's not working. No, however long. Yeah. Remember what we read in Revelation? Yes. Uh, that which you have received already, that which you already have, hold fast till I come. Yes. Till I come. Yes. Yes. Amen. That means we don't quit. That's yes. right. We don't quit. Right. And so even though she went back to being blind for a three-week period yes. after she was healed, yes. she just kept thanking God. She never let that deceive her yes. into That's thinking true. that her, she wasn't healed. Right. See, you're not healed because your body works. Uh -huh. You're healed because the Word says it's yours. Amen. And Jesus purchased it. Amen. You're healed because the Word says it. Amen. What are we holding fast? We're holding fast to what the Word said, not to what the body feels. Amen. So after three weeks of her being blind, but she just continued, just thanking God, thank you that I'm healed. Thank you for my sight. Thank you that I can see. Yes. And after three weeks, her sight came back and she never had to deal with it again. Why? She showed herself skillful yes. in the face of opposition. People say, well, why does it keep coming back? It's an opportunity to gain more skill. Amen. Just keep gaining that skill. Yeah, just keep gaining it. Um, another, and we've said this in the previous episodes, but it's so important. Yes. When you're holding fast, mm -hmm. make sure you're checking with your spirit uh -huh. of get the spirits leading on what you're holding fast to. Yes. Amen. 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 Before you release your faith for something, take time to hear from God. Right. Yes. Yes. Take time to hear from God. Yes. Don't just start throwing random verses at your need. Right. Yes. Take yes. time to hear something that the Spirit of God would quicken to you yes. because that's going to be, he's, He breathes on that and it becomes a living thing to yes. you, yes. you know. And then you're, you're holding to something that, that is alive to you. Yes. The Word tells us in the book of Proverbs, wisdom is the principal thing. Yes. So when you say, Pastor Nancy, I'm endeavoring to stand my ground, but it doesn't seem like I'm making progress. Talk to God about it. Yeah. Get His wisdom right. yes. on it because wisdom is the principal thing. Yes. Yes. What does He say to you right. about it? Right. Amen. Amen. The, what's the Word tell us? Uh, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. Yes. Yes. And He will direct yes. your yes. paths. He'll direct your paths of faith. Yes. 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 He'll direct your stand of faith. Yes. Yes. He'll direct your holding fast. Acknowledge Him. Yes. Yes. Acknowledge, say, what would, because you, you, if you know the word, there's, uh, the word is vast. Yes. There are many verses that you could just randomly draw on. Yeah. But acknowledge him right. in all your ways and he'll direct you. And you say, well, he do, I don't seem to have any verse in particular. Then just hold to what you know. That's yeah. right. Just hold to what you know. Yeah. Amen. The word you know, just hold to it. Yeah. And he will direct you based on his word. Why? Because then you'll know what to say when opposition comes. Amen. I want to give a testimony or tell about an event that happened in the life of my husband in his ministry years and years ago before the church that we're pastoring now in Murrieta, California. He pastored a church in, in Southern California years ago. And they had, he had moved this congregation into a particular building. God had told, he said, he said, God told me that was our building. He told our, the congregation, that's our building. So they moved into that building. Well, the building needed to be rezoned. The, where the building was, that property needed to be rezoned so it could hold a church or house a church. It wasn't zoned for a church, yeah. but God told them that was their building. So they moved into it and then they had to go to the city and get the rezoning, yeah. get it rezoned. So a church could be housed there. So there was the, um, you know, the council meeting, the city council meeting, and they're going to vote. The city council is going to vote on the rezoning of this. And, you know, when sometimes, uh, maybe I don't know enough <laughs> to know if it's, if it's standard practice or what, but they'll invite the community yeah. 
to come if they have opposition to yeah. that being yeah. zoned a certain yeah. way and let them give voice, you know, their yeah. argument. Yeah. So um, Ed came to that meeting, my husband did, and his congregation came. <laughs> so they filled up the room yeah. and they knew that they needed it rezoned favorably for them. Yes. And so Ed said that um, he told, you know, their, basically their argument that they were making. And he said you could hear just real low, the congregation was praying in other tongues, praying in the spirit behind. They weren't doing it loud, but he said it sounded like a low buzz in the, in the room. You know, they're all praying in tongues. <laughs> Not in a way that would distract, but he could, he knew what they were doing. And so the city council took, uh, held the vote. And I don't know how many there were on, you know, on the council. I think maybe seven or something like that. And so they took the vote and four were against the rezoning. Three were for it. Mm. So by one vote, yeah. that the city voted it down. They mm. could not get it rezoned. But God had told Ed that you're building. Right. Right. So Ed was surprised yeah. mm-hmm. that when the vote was given and they're doing it orally, right. yeah. they're making it out loud. And um, they voted it down. And Ed said all the buzz behind him stopped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the people, the congregation yeah. oh, just wow. were shocked sure. because... God said, that's our building. And they just voted it down. And uh, it said, they all quit praying in tongues. It's like, where'd y'all go? (laughs) And Ed stood there and he said, he looked to his spirit, God, what do I do now? And God said to him, just stand still. In other words, don't say anything. Don't mess this up. (laughs) Don't get in the mental arena. Don't start questioning. Don't start reasoning. He just said, stand still. Uh, And so he just stood still. And he said he said he could feel all the eyes of the congregation on him. Like what now? And the, what, what is it? The stenographer that, is thank you for that big word <laughs> is, is keeping record and account of the entire proceedings of this meeting. So she's recording on this machine, the votes. And as it is standing there, she said, my machine jammed. It won't work. I was not able to get the vote count. You're going to have to revote. Amen. And when she said that, one of the city council members said, oh, I changed my vote. Give it to him. Ed always said this, and I don't doubt it for a minute. Ed always said, an angel went over and put his finger in that machine and said, you're not going any further. If you hold fast, heaven keeps moving. If you hold fast, heaven keeps moving. Heaven never stops moving unless you stop. I'm talking about in your behalf. I remember there was something that God told me that he was going to give me, going to do for me, and it looked like it went the wrong direction. And when I went to God and I said, what about this? He said, I'm still working. Just because something looks like it's the wrong direction doesn't mean he quit working. So don't you let go. Hold fast. Hold fast. Whether it's over a business, whether it's over a home, whether it's over property, whether it's over your body, whether it's over your children, whether it's over your home, whatever it is, hold fast to what God told you. Amen. And so, of course, they did a revote and they got the building rezoned. Um, I love what it says. I want to read to you 1 John chapter 2 in verse 27. 1 John chapter 2 in verse 27. It says, but the anointing which you have received of him abides in you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, 
the seed, that anointing that's in you yes. will tell you what to hold to, yes. right? Amen. It'll point to a scripture. Uh, as that anointing teaches you of all things and is truth and is no lie. Yes. And even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him or you shall hold to what? Yes. He said, because what he said is the truth and no lie. That's right. Amen. I can't tell you the number of times I've had to look at circumstances that were going differently than what God said they were going to go. And I said, what he said is the truth and no lie. These circumstances are lying. He's not. Don't ever question God. Always question the circumstances. Hold to this. What the Spirit says to you, that's the truth and no lie. That's, it's truth and no lie. And if you'll hold to that, everything else around you that tries to say it's not going to come to pass, it will change. Yes. I've yes. seen it time and time and time again. Yes. And that situation with my husband in that city council meeting was a prime example. Yes. It looked like, see, God said that's their building. And there was out came this vote that it's not going to be your building for a church. But he just stood there because it's the, what God said is the truth and no lie. What happened? The man changed, not God. Yes. Know what God said to you and hold to it because yes. it's the truth. Yes. It is the truth yes. and no yes. lie. Yes. So I, I would encourage you. If when you're standing in that stand of faith and you're holding fast... Always use these words. That's the truth and no lie. That's the truth and no lie. And all these circumstances, they're lying circumstances because they're going to change. And it looks like at times that they're not going to change. It doesn't matter what they look like. It's the truth and no lie. And it pleases God when all you're holding to is what he said. It pleases God that what he says is enough for you. Now, did you get that? It pleases God. When you show him that what he says is enough for you. What he says is the truth and no lie. And I don't care how long it takes before everything else changes. But if you will hold fast to what he said. And so many times when things look like they weren't going to change, I said, nope, I know what God says. And I tell my circumstances what God said. And I keep telling them. Amen. But you don't want to miss next time because it's just going to be a blessing to keep going further with this. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In this book by Nancy Dufresne, Peace, Living Free from Worry, she teaches how to close the door to worry, fear, and doubt. Order now at DufresneMinistries.org. Come join us for our Dufresne Ministries Miracle Crusade in Tulsa, Oklahoma at The Rock Church, April 16th through the 20th. For more information and to register, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.